Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you the ins and outs of lazy loading, a new feature in .NET 5 for Blazor WebAssembly apps that lets you load assemblies on demand. Yes, it's only for Blazor WebAssembly because Blazor Server doesn't have to download assemblies before loading them. Whereas WebAssembly by default has to download all the assemblies it's going to use before it can even say, hello world. There are a few gotchas, yes, but they aren't hard to understand with a little coaching. <laughs> Get it? Coaching? <laughs> I... uh... And that's all coming up. Guess where? Right here. Guess when? Right now. On Blaze and Train. All right, so I'm just starting off with a new Blazor WebAssembly standalone application called Lazy Load Demo. Now, to really show in a dramatic way the why you need lazy loading and the difference that it can make, I'm going to create a new uh, class library that I'm going to reference in there, and I'm going to put a lot of code in there. Let's create the class library now. It's just going to be called Big Assembly. All right, and while we're at it, let's just add the project reference. Now, I need a lot of code, something that will generate an assembly that's big. So I'm going to create a console application and generate a class that has 10,000 methods in it. That's what I'm going to do now. So that's going to be called Bogus Class Generator. Let's add that now. So here's bogus class generator. We're asking the user for a namespace. It's using a string builder to concatenate uh, all these lines. And we're going to create 100,000 methods. Did I say 10,000 before? I meant 100,000 methods from 0 to 99,999. So I'm going to make this the startup project and run it. Big assembly our namespace. Boom. Man, that's fast, huh? All right, so now I'm going to find this file and add it to BigAssembly. There it is right there. And now just so you know what we're looking at here, method 0, method 1, all the way down to method 99,999. Now we're going to add that assembly Namespace to imports. And this is how we're going to use it. I uh, usually hijack index, but today I feel like hijacking counter because I want to navigate to it and I want you to see how much time it takes to load once we do lazy loading. But right now, we're just going to add this. All right, before we increment the counter, we're going to instantiate a new bogus class instance called bogus thingy and we're going to call the method. 852 on it. Now set this back to the startup project, our Blazor app, and let's run it. All right, so I've loaded up the browser tools and gone to the application tab. And you can see here if I go into the cache that these two items were downloaded Big Assembly DLL and Big Assembly PDB. That's the debugging information, which is four megs. And the DLL itself is 643K. All right, just so that, you know, it, if we don't do lazy loading, all of this stuff comes down web before we even use it. So the first step is to go into the csproj file of your Blazor WebAssembly application. And we're going to tell Blazor which assemblies we want to la lazy load. And that's going to go into this list right here. So you can see here, Blazor WebAssembly lazy load include, and then your big assembly DLL. So now this is saying, hey, don't load this when you load the application. I'm going to tell you when to load it. Now, if you don't manually load it, guess what happens? It's not going to instantiate. We're going to go to counter and it won't be there. And we'll have a problem, won't we? Wah, wah, wah. So just in case you want to know what that error is, 
it is could not load file or assembly big assembly. All right. So now it's up to us to load that on demand. How do we do that? Well, that magic happens in app.razor. So you've seen app.razor. We talked about this in the routing show and uh, in the anatomy of a Blazor project episode. So what happens here is we're looking for a route that matches whatever route the user is going to, counter, fetch data, whatever. And if it finds a route, it's giving you uh, the route view, which is based on this layout, main layout. And if it doesn't find the route, it tells you, sorry, there's nothing at this address. Okay, now let's change this up a little bit. So the first thing you notice is prefer exact matches is true by default in .NET 5, so you don't need to do that. But we've added some using statements here. We're injecting this lazy assembly loader, uh, and we're calling that instance assembly loader. And we've also specified additional assemblies on the router. And we're setting this to this variable here, lazy loaded assemblies which is a list of assembly, right? So we have to provide that on demand. That's how we do it. And we're also handling this on navigate async. Now this is passing a context which has a path and this is how we test, you know, what the user is requesting. So if the user clicks on that counter icon to go to the counter page, what we're going to do is load up big assembly DLL and then add that to our lazy loaded assemblies list, which then gets added into the route, and then everything's fine. Now, another thing you should notice is that we have this navigating section here, and that displays when it's loading, as it's loading. So what we're doing is we're just showing the word loading, all right? And then the rest of this stuff is pretty much exactly the same. All right, here's our application again, and I'm going to sort everything by content length. And you can see that those, uh, that DLL, big assembly, did not load. Okay, so it's not there. Now watch what happens when I go to counter the first time. Okay, so yeah, it took a little bit of time. And now you can see that those DLLs were loaded. So it loaded on demand, and that's what lazy loading is. Now if we go somewhere else and come back, it's not loading again, it's still there. Let's actually watch this in action. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here in App Razor after the assembly gets loaded. So this is gonna happen every time. But as you'll see, the first time we run it, This stops right here and assemblies, it has four items in it, including the system reflection assembly. All right, so let's just let that run. We'll click off of it and then we'll go to counter again. Now it still runs, but look, assemblies comes back with zero items. So when you add uh, a, an empty list to another list, guess what happens? Nothing. So that's how that works. All right, now let's talk about a gotcha, something that you can't do with lazy loading that you should be aware of. What if I wanted to inject bogus class, like so? I wanna say inject uh, bogus class, bogus thingy. All right, and then I'll take this out here, and that means that I have to add it as a scoped service, so we'll come down and do that. All right, let's see what happens here. What do you think is going to happen? Boom. We got an error. And the error is, yeah, could not load file or assembly, big assembly, because that's all happening in the beginning of the program. This happens when the program runs. So you can't inject something if it's not there at the start. So therefore... That ain't a gonna work. All right, so no injection for you. Let's talk about components. 
So what I want to do now is create a Razor class library that has a component, and I want to use that in my application, and then we'll lazy load that on demand, all right? Different from a class library, this is a Razor class library, so this is going to have a component in it. So let's create one called lazy component. And let's go ahead and add a reference. There we go. And while we're at it, let's just go to imports too. Now, the component by default uh, is called component one, the component that comes with the template. So I want to add a little code to it. So it's not unusual to have publicly accessible methods in a component, but that means we need a reference. So let's go to fetch data, and we'll hijack that one this time. So this is all code that I've added. Here's a reference to a component, component one. Here's a string message from component. And then we have a show message method, which sets message from component uh, from component one ref dot get message. And then we have our component defined up here. I've added this mark up here. We've got our component one ref there. Uh, and now the message is displayed and a button that calls show message. So without lazy loading, this is all working fine. Let's just make sure of that. All right, here's fetch data. There's our component. And if I click show message, this is a message from component one. See that there? All right, now let's do what we need to do to make this lazy loaded. Well, we have to go add one of these, Blazor Web Assembly Lazy Load, right, for lazy component DLL. And we also have to add some code to App Razor to handle when we navigate to fetch data. It's all the same except that when we go to fetch data, we're going to load lazy component DLL. All right, now let's see what happens. Boom. All right, so here's what happened. Same kind of deal. We cannot load file or assembly. Now, why is that happening? You might think that it's this ref right there. Well, it's actually what this reference is. Right here, we've defined a component, component one, which is in lazy component, that library. And it isn't going to work because when the compiler sees this is component one, it goes to resolve that reference. And of course, it's not there. So that's why it doesn't run at the beginning. Now, to work around this, I'm going to give you a little tip. And the tip is, change this to component base. And so, yes, this component one is also a component base, but it's really a component one. So now down here, what we have to do is cast this. So I'm going to change this show message code. So if component one ref, which is component base, does not equal null, which means it's loaded, then what I'm doing is casting that component one ref to uh, component one, and we're getting a variable there. And now I'm calling c1.getMessage. See the diff? Let's try it. All right, well, it runs. That's good. Now when I go to fetch data, boom. Works just fine. All right, so these are the things that you need to be aware of if you're going to do lazy loading. Anywhere you have a reference, uh, that's a class level reference isn't going to work. Injection isn't going to work. Now, did you notice the flash when we went to uh, fetch data? Watch this. The screen flashes white for a second. And that happens because we get that loading dot, dot, dot. And also, when we go to counter, you can see we get this big white page that says loading. And, you know, we could use the main layout for that, but it's still kind of kind of weird. What I'd like to do is take that out altogether. So look at App Razor. And if you just take this navigating out, you won't experience a flash, but you will experience the delay still. So check it out. Fetch data. Boom. All right, there's a little delay, but at least it didn't flash. 
Now watch what happens when we go to counter. Counter. What's going on? What's going on? Did it work? Oh, okay. So here's a way that we can alleviate that problem. I smell another tip. The tip is we're going to use some JavaScript to set the cursor on these nav elements. So we need a little JavaScript. Let's go into index.html and add a method. Set cursor. Pretty simple. Pass it the ID of an element and the cursor, which is a string. We find the element. We set style cursor equals cursor. Okay, that's your JavaScript for the day. Uh, now we need a little bit of help on the nav menu. So what I've done to the nav menu is I've added IDs, one to the counter nav link and one to the fetch data nav link. And I've set them appropriately so that JavaScript can find them. Now what I want to do is really cool. We're going to go back to app razor and we're going to change that up a little too. All right, so I've got two async methods, one wait cursor that you pass the element ID and another pointer cursor where you pass the element ID. That uses the JavaScript runtime, which I've injected uh, to invoke set cursor, passing the element ID and either wait or pointer, okay? And then right here, if I'm loading counter, I will set the wait cursor before and the pointer cursor, which is the default for a nav link, after. And the same with fetch data. And it just looks a little better. So let's see how that all looks. Now I did have to empty my cache before doing this. Now uh, it doesn't, you can't really see it with fetch data because it happens very quickly. I guess it did flash there a little bit, but it's really obvious with counter. Watch this. Noony, 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 noo. Isn't that cool? You get the wait cursor. So that's telling the user, hey, you need to wait while I load this. I think this is a really important signal when you're using lazy loading. And that's one way to do it. You could you CSS gurus can probably figure out a better way, but eh, I like my old JavaScript if I'm gonna do something like that. So that is my demo on lazy loading. Back to you in the studio, Carl. There is a little bit more to know about lazy loading, so I encourage you to look up the docs with your favorite search engine if you get stuck. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!